Oh, look at that. The boss is showing me the pros on his car. Oh my God. Ooh, I know it is uh, on top of the barbecue cover as well. It's quite thick. Yeah, see, there you go. That's icy. We can make some um, is that good for you, slushy. <laughs> yes, because they will survive that. They're top succulents. Yeah. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Little icicles, not icicles, but ice, that's ice uh, forming. Okay, so we've had a few mornings like that. It's now about 7.30 and the sun is just about to pop out. We are going to be away for three to four months on our prospecting trip and I thought I'll just do a walk through around my back garden just to see what state my plants i'm going to be leaving them in i am going to leave them as is with no watering and it's actually winter now so it's just the start of winter we've already had a couple of days where in we got some frost so basically they are going to be left out in the frost so but those ones there are mostly some provivals and these ones here as well i didn't have a chance to put them in the garden anyway i was hoping that they are uh, gonna get watered enough and protected enough from the frost those ones there because they're not really that frost sensitive but just a little bit of covering and we got a shovel there and a whole heap of oh, parsley in here and our tomato so the frost is still not this severe uh, we got minus one so far the coldest degree celsius and so the tomatoes being protected from the fence um, then that's why they're still alive and even the petunias this is actually not petunia they're uh, something calibra choa or something like that but anyway they're still alive and they're perennial anyway, but they normally die down during winter when it's uh, frosty. But anyway, so I've got Ionium over there. That's a form of bromeliad at the back there and something else as well. A variegated uh, variety and an ordinary variety. So those are cuttings of Ionium in there. And then that one there you go just to see what we've got here and again more ionium oh that one is a green jaw aloe by the way yep and it's just out here and over in this corner now those ones are supposed to be frost hardy frost hardy what i meant is minus 10 frost hardy so I think that's the coldest we've got um, is minus 10. Here in Canberra, Australia, where we live. So again, these are Echeverius and that was Echeverius as well previously. Anyway, these ones are supposed to be frost hardy. This one is water lily. That one is Polydonis. This one is Elegance, uh, Pearl de von Nonberg. And that one is, I don't know, I just got that as a leaf cutting with no name i've grown that from a leaf cutting from since last winter so that one's already seen minus 10 as a baby and now it still survived and over here we've got uh, a lola hybrid and that is a lola and uh, monroe black knight chocolate and black prince and on the other side here, I've got a host, but anyway, I'm going to start from the other end first. This is just to log uh, all my plants. Anyway, so that's uh, Euphobia mammillaris, that one there. And that means it's going to die, I think. But anyway, so these are, uh, hang on, what is that? So these are Echeveria chocolate that I've got growing here, but... I don't know if they're going to survive without me. Please survive. You'll be fine. Look. And then that one is a mix of cuttings from which is where I get my succulents from. 
most of them but anyway these are again different succulents but it's sort of under covered by the sh uh, metal shelf anyway hopefully okay that one I'm gonna put them out here so they're gonna at least get a bit of watering or something if it does rain and what we got agave titonota we got gasteria hawothia uh, gasteria and euphobia and also aloe that variegated aloe that's the only one I've got and yet I am uh, maltreating it anyway this is like a miniature ionium so hopefully that will survive there and again these ones were cuttings last winter so that is a Victoria Echeverria and that one is Lady Grey or yeah and uh, that one is a Black Prince and they are alive the three of them were taken at the same time or propagated at the same time and the two have grown but that Black Prince is a bit slow anyway so there's another Ionium here and a Sinisho in the bottom there and more sedum and Groptopetalum uh, that's a ghost plant and I've got a so that one is a ghost worth here that one is a black aloe black prince agave stricta nana uh, agave regina and palida echeveria and more succulents and also cactus horrible cactus and ionium and another prickly pear over here is colorata is that colorata or hercules sorry this one is a bouquet of hercules with some um graptocidum and this is beltana echeveria and that one is graptoveria fanfare okay they're quite small see these ones okay and then those ones are little red or uh, pink jelly beans and that one is a graptocidum this one is fred ives grown from cuttings and this one is again okay i'm just gonna walk through i'm not gonna say anything now but are you listening damn These ones are under uh, this calamansi tree, so this is sort of semi-protected, but they're still open, so just the sky up above. Oh, this one I've grown. This is a black prince, and look at that. It's become a variegated uh, form, so now uh, hopefully it will keep its variegation. And look at the babies at the back so hopefully when I come back there'll be lots of babies
This is um, Graptivaria Fred Ives, which is crested form. That's just gorgeous, that one. I already have a cuttings from that, which is also uh, crested. And this one, I think, is going black. Um, I think it's getting hit by the frost, but anyway, I am still leaving that there. Now, four months later, this area looks like this now. The Crassula Hummels, or Hummels Sunset, uh, has uh, shrunk or lost all its leaves, got hit by the frost, didn't like the frost very much, so you can see even that, that's still sort of rotted, uh, but new growth coming up. So in a couple of months, you wouldn't even, or I can't even, probably wouldn't be able to tell anymore because this happened last year, it's the same thing. It was quite a big plant and then I left it out here and the frost got to it or maybe not enough water as well because again, last year we went away for three months again and no one looking after the poor thing so it ended up looking like that as well and also the other one on the other side is also the same thing but then now it's so now we are in the middle of spring and so this one looking worse for wear but anyway that will just recover as well I bought some more new plants to torture I call them torturing because that one actually was already out in the open that is a glow sport and I just put it here because to break up the color of the two reds and this one is a new acquisition it's called the rest rick and this one here I just didn't come with a name so I'm just gonna leave it there I put the label in there because it just says Echeveria Apart from that, it doesn't say what sort of Echeveria. And that one is a Pachyveria Moonglow. And that's the spot it's been in since we left four months ago. So this is part shade, part sun. So it gets the sort of afternoon sun. This is the Caranculata that was quite big before and then now. It dried up, but then it's coming back. And also it's got mealybug in there inside those white powdery things as mealy bug so I need to spray that and that one is a PVN look how gorgeous that is And that one is a new one. So I just got that uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's called the, I just have to put a name, Linda Jean, but I'm not too sure about it. And that one is another PVN. I've had this one for about three years now, actually. This is the oldest Pearl von Nonberg that I have. And that one is only a couple of weeks old. It could be a PVN or it could also be a purple pearl. So it did not come with a label. So I have to wait. And that one, that gorgeous one was only small when I bought that uh, about six months ago. And there was no name, but so I just called it Hybrid 4. But it looks like a Tutti Frutti to me. So whether that's a Tutti Frutti, I'm not too sure.
this was labeled Graptoveria and it's also very very hardy look how big the leaves are you can see so it's like a spoon shape so you can tell that it's also dried up but otherwise it survived now this arrangement I made a few months ago before I left so this is just a combination of acacia ponds sempervivum different types of sempervivum or sempervivum the pork and beans and also the fred ives or maybe it's a Douglas hut because when I got it, it didn't have a label so I'm not too sure but otherwise it is just beautiful the colors it's just gorgeous and then that's also another acacia ponds so that has taken heat and cold or our extreme heat and cold for what I consider extreme for where we are anyway 